In this lesson, we are going to describe solutions of systems of linear equations. Let us recall that for a system of two linear equations, precisely one of the following is true. It's either the system has exactly one solution, it has infinite number of solutions, or it has no solution. Graphically speaking, what it means is that number one will occur if the two lines will intersect. For number two, the two lines will coincide with each other, so that's why you have infinitely many solutions. And for number three, the two lines would be parallel. In general, this is true for any system of linear equations, not just with system of two linear equations in two variables. The system is either consistent or inconsistent. Consistent means you have a solution, whereas for inconsistent, no solution. But for consistent, you can either have one solution only or you have infinitely many solutions. If we have one solution, we say that our system is independent. And if it has infinitely many solutions, it is dependent. Sometimes, if we are given a system, we do not necessarily want the solutions to the system. We just want to know, does it have a solution in the first place? And the second question is, if a system have a solution, does it have one solution or an infinite number of solutions? It turns out that the row echelon form of the augmented matrix will be sufficient to answer these questions. Let us consider the following system of linear equations. This is the augmented matrix. Suppose that we transform it to its REF. It will be given by this matrix. Let us reduce it further to its RREF. We will get this matrix. This column is for X, Y, and Z. Hence, we have the solution x is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 1, and z is equal to 2. This system has exactly one solution. Let us consider this next example. If we get the REF, which is the row echelon form of the augmented matrix, we will obtain this one. Notice that if we use back substitution, this is an augmented matrix, so let me just write the lines over here. What does this last row indicate? This means 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 plus 0x4 is equal to 4, or that 0 is equal to 4, and that is impossible. Hence, this one has no solution. Another system of linear equations that we can consider is this one. The REF of the augmented matrix is given as follows. Let us look at the leading entries. We have 1, 1, and 1 here. As you can see here, the third column is non-pivot column. Therefore, we have a free variable corresponding at x3. Since x3 is a free variable, hence it can be any real number, and therefore this one has infinitely many solutions. Based on the examples that we have, we want to know whether a system is consistent or inconsistent. The key to answer this question is just by looking at a pivot in the last column. If there is a pivot in the last column, the system has no solution. Here is a table which summarizes that. Let's take a look at the previous examples that we have. This is our last column. This is an augmented matrix. This matrix is not yet in REF because we have a leading entry of 2. However, it's almost close there. We just have to divide this thing by 2. I just did not divide it by 2 so that we will not have any fractions. 
for this 4 over here, that's a leading term, and then it can easily be turned into a 1. There is a pivot here. So therefore, it has no solution or it is inconsistent. This is the example that we had earlier. Whereas for this one, our leading entries are 1, 1, and 1. There is no pivot here. But if there is no pivot, take note that we just say that it is consistent. We still cannot determine whether it has one solution or no solution. Again, by looking at the pivot in the last column, we will just be able to know whether a system has a solution or not. Now, suppose that our system is consistent, meaning to say we know that there is a solution. We want to know whether it has one or many solutions. And answer that question, the existence of free variables will determine if it has one or many solutions. If there is at least one free variable, the system would have many solutions. Here is a table which summarizes that. If there are free variables, there are many solutions. If there are no free variables, or meaning to say, all the variables are basic variables, then the system has one solution. Let us consider these examples. We already know that this matrix here has no solution just by looking at the pivot column. So we will not use this table here. Whereas for this one, previously, we know that this one is consistent. It has a solution because it has no pivot in the last column. Now, let us determine whether it has many or one solution. Do we have any free variables? The leading terms here are 1, 1, and 1. These are the columns corresponding to your variables. Since all the variables are basic, there are no free variables. And therefore, what can we say? This one has exactly one solution. Let us try this. Given the following augmented matrices, we want to determine whether it has one solution, many solution, or no solution. Okay, first, let's see whether it has a solution or not. Do we have a pivot? Let's look at the leading coefficients. These are our leading coefficients. So therefore, we do not have a pivot in the last column. So therefore, this is consistent. However, we do have three variables on our third and fifth column. So therefore, this one has many solutions. Next, again, we always have to look at the leading coefficients. Is this consistent or inconsistent? We have no pivot in the last column, so therefore this is consistent. And we have no free variables. Therefore, this one has one solution, exactly one solution. Two more examples. We always have to look at the leading coefficients there. Take note that we have a leading coefficient in our last column, meaning to say this is a pivot column. So therefore, this one here is inconsistent. It has no solution. The last row is saying that 0 is equal to 1. So that's why it has no solution. For this matrix over here, these are our leading coefficients. No pivot column, so therefore this is consistent. Do we have free variables? None. Therefore, this one has one solution. Take note that this last row over here, which is say that 0 is equal to 0. You can actually delete that. And this matrix will just be equivalent to this one. You can only delete it if it is a 
row of zeros. However, in this case, you cannot do that because you have a 1 here. Let's solve. We want to find conditions on A and B such that the system has no solution, one solution, or infinitely many solutions. The first thing that we have to do is to always write its augmented matrix. Next, I will swap rows 1 and 2 because I already have my 1 here. Next, I want to zero this out. In order to zero out these entries over here, I will make use of row 1 because this is the leading entry above it. So the new row 2 will be obtained by subtracting row 2 from 3R1. The new R3 will be obtained by subtracting this from 5 times R1. If that's the case, we get... Now that the first column is already finished, I will now take a look at my second column here. The leading term is 4. I will not divide this by 4. I do not want to concern myself with turning this into a 1. What I just want to do first is to make the entry below it equal to 0. So how do I do that? To turn this entry to 0, the leading entry above it is 4. So therefore, we multiply the second row by 2 and then subtract it from R3. Or R3 minus 2 R2 would be your new row 3. we get this matrix over here. Let us now focus ourselves in this row echelon form. Well, it's not yet in row echelon form because this is still 4, although I just did not divide this by 4 because I do not want to have fractions. Anyway, when will it be inconsistent? First, let's take a look at the pivot column. The pivot column. First, let's check if we will have a pivot in your last column. Remember that if we do that, we are checking basically if it is consistent or inconsistent. We would have a pivot at the last column if negative 2a plus b minus c is not equal to 0. So if this happens, we say that the system has no solution. It will have no pivot at last column if negative 2a plus b minus c is equal to 0. Because if that is the case, this row over here will just be equal to 0. If this is the case, it will be consistent. So now we assume that negative 2a plus b minus c is equal to 0. Equivalently, we are saying that the system is consistent. What are the conditions for it to have one solution or infinitely many solutions? Since this is already equal to 0, I will now change this to 0. Since we have a row of zeros here, I can simplify it by just removing this matrix over here. And we will just look at this matrix. We can now erase this. How will we know if we have infinitely many solutions or one solution? How will we know if we have one solution or infinitely many solutions? We look at the leading coefficients. Note that we will always have a free variable corresponding to z. Therefore, if it is consistent, we just have infinitely many solutions. 
cannot happen that we have exactly one solution because of the presence of your free variable at the third column. Z is a free variable. Here are our conditions. If negative 2a plus b minus c is not equal to 0, then this system has no solution. If negative 2a plus b minus c is equal to 0, the system would have infinitely many solutions. The last topic that we are going to discuss in this lesson would be homogeneous system. A homogeneous system of linear equations is one in which all of the constant terms are 0. It means that your augmented matrix is of this form. You have your coefficient matrix here. And then all the constants here are equal to 0. Let us consider one example. Suppose we have 1, 2, 3, 0, and then x, y is equal to 0. Take note that if x equals 0 and y is equal to 0, this would satisfy this system over here. Therefore, in general, if we have this homogeneous system AX equals 0, we know that this X over here is a column matrix. I will just denote it by this. This one is automatically a solution. It will always be a solution to your system. This is what we call trivial solution. So formally, here is that result. If we have a homogeneous system of linear equations, there will only be two possibilities. It's either we have exactly one solution. If that is the case, the solution is the trivial solution. All the variables would be set to zero. Or there are infinitely many solutions in addition to the trivial solution. The point here is that it cannot happen that a homogeneous system has no solution because we already know that the trivial solution will always exist. Let us solve this homogeneous system. Using gauss jordan elimination, we get that the RREF of the augmented matrix will be as follows. The leading terms are here and here. We have a free variable corresponding to x3. How will we describe the solutions of this one? This system has infinitely many solutions. For our last example, we want to find the values of k such that this homogeneous system will have non-trivial solutions. In other words, it has many solutions. If you're asked whether a system has one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions at all, you always have to start with its augmented matrix. The augmented matrix here is k minus 2, 1, 1, k minus 2. I will swap row 1 and row 2 just so that I already have my 1 here. I want to zero this out because it is the term below this leading entry over here. How would we do that? We subtract k minus 2 times row 1. That would be our new R2. If we do that, we get k minus 2 minus k minus 2 is 0. And 1 minus k minus 2 squared. What are we going to do next? Let's always look at the leading terms. How do we know if we have infinitely many solutions? We will have infinitely many solutions if there are free variables. And when would we have a free variable? If this number over here is not a leading term. That means that 1 minus k minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Hence, k minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 1, we get that k is equal to 3 or 1. If k is equal to 3 or k is equal to 1, we would have non-trivial solutions.